Hey, Mike. Yep. <clears throat> my name's Cody. Thanks for taking my call. Omaha, Nebraska. Um, the quick question is around the ever revolving topic of employees. Mm -hmm. um, specifically today, I won't get into the rest of it, but just drama. Um, it, it seems like even the guys that I do have that stick around for days to weeks to months on end, just very dramatic. Uh, you know, problems with other guys sometimes going to you know jail. Not real serious stuff, but disruptions in the business and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, online from the computer, looking at your videos and other folks that are more polished, it just looks like a different caliber of, of person that they're hiring or you're hiring. Like what I would call professionals and less dramatic, not to be personal to anybody, but, you know, less drama and just more, hey, we're here for business, we're here to work, we're here to make a living, that more polished employee. So, I mean, what's your recommendation on how to weed out and get more of that direction of, you know, we're professionals, we're trying to do good work. We're here to work as a team and build this business rather than, you know, I'm the 20 bucks an hour trim guy that goes to prison once every three months and, and is just a disruption to the business. Yeah. Like, I think the first thing is you got to realize that you're judging yourself based upon your competitors. And most of us look at our competitors through rose colored glasses as if everything they're doing is working when you just don't get to see all the drama that's happening at their place, right? And same thing with like, even you look at someone like myself, like, oh, they have it buttoned down. It's like, no, no, we still deal with drama, lots of it. Um, it's just a matter of that's not what you show to the public. And you, same thing to your competitors. They don't, they're not advertising their, their dirty laundry either. So just realize it's happening in every organization. Even if you look at, you know, the best of the best businesses ever, and they're hiring people for $200,000 a year, there's still drama, just different types of drama. Right. You got infidelity happening in the office. You got people doing, you know, coming to work on drugs. Like you got weird stuff still happening. It's just a different type of drama. Right. And you can have, you know, a bunch of women uh, and, you know, have all sorts of drama happening. Right. Different type of drama than you're going to have with a bunch of dudes that are working hard on drugs, doing, you know, smoking, doing whatever, you know, coming to work on a, on a, over, uh, on a, What's it called? Sorry, I just went blank there. I was reading something. Uh, on, on, oh, you know, hang, hung, hung over. Um, those are just different problems, different types of drama, right? So you're going to have drama regardless. Every single business has drama. That's the first thing to realize. Your competitors, they, they have just as much, if not more drama than you. Uh, I have drama. Everyone has drama, all right? It's just that most of the time you drama, you don't talk about. Like, I can't talk about the employees that, you know, this week have medical issues, family issues, you know, people that have or, or have debt issues. Like I can't talk about any of that, but I have to have those conversations with every single employee. Right. So it's just something that you don't talk about. It's not public. Um, so that's the first thing. Number one, very, very important. We always look at our competitors through rose colored glasses as if their businesses are so good and perfect. Secondly, I would say as you grow the business, you do get a little bit more brand authority because you're getting people that are coming into the business mostly from referrals from your existing crew. So if they, if you have good guys, they're bringing other good guys to come work for you. Uh, as well as when you have applicants constantly coming in, you are able to weed out your bottom performers. And it's the same thing like customers with raising prices. When it comes to your team, if you have low performers, as long as you get a lot of applicants coming in, you're able to replace the lowest performing employees with the new applicants that are really well qualified and really good. So what I would say is double down on your applicant, uh, trying to get more applicants, double down on your hiring process, double down on getting more people in the door for applications because it'll put pressure on people to either perform or they're going to get cut. People will get complacent and there'll be more drama in environments like, hey, if you, as long as you just show up to work, you got yourself a job. Well, now when everyone's competing for a position because they know there's five other people that are ready to be called tomorrow if you don't show up to work, that changes everything, right? And so when you're in a place of power to be able to do that, it changes the business and your relationship with the employees dramatically because now you are the one that um, has more of leverage. And so uh, it sounds horrible. I hate even using that term like leverage against employees. I don't like using that. However, the whole culture deteriorates when you don't have leverage and it's actually really bad for your top performers when you as the employer don't have leverage because the bottom performers begin to run the ship, right? And everyone just go down to the common, the lowest common denominator of, of skill and effort. And so it's your responsibility as an employer to retain that leverage. So you are able to, uh, replace the bottom performers, keeping the higher performers more motivated because it's the worst thing to work with low performers. So it's your responsibility to do that. So I would just double down on more applicants, better hiring processes, 
you know, just constantly having people in the backseat that are ready to step forward if you need them um, and just constantly hiring. 